This is Sean Patrick Kelly, and here is my Fantasia 2023 interview with uh, Jen Wexler about her film The Sacrifice Game, which had its world premiere at the 2023 Fantasia Film Festival. I previously uh, interviewed uh, Jen Wexler for her uh, 2018 debut, The Ranger, and uh, as it will be discussed in the interview for The Sacrifice Game, this was actually a film that was in development before the Rangers. So I hope you enjoy this interview for the Sacrifice Game. Okay, so um, uh, how did the idea for the Sacrifice Game come about? Um, can you hear me from me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I uh, went to New Jersey public school in high school, and I was always very um, enamored by the idea of the boarding school setting. It seemed very mysterious and romantic to me, so I wanted to, to make a movie set in that kind of space. And uh, I love Christmas horror. Black Christmas is one of my favorite movies. And um, and also just 70s horror, uh, Last House on the Left, Suspiria. So all these movies I, I was influenced by and I, I was excited to take different ideas uh, from those influences and merge them together. I think you, know, you already partially answered this. Um, any specific reason you set the film in 1971 at Christmas time? <laughs> yeah, I mean, part of it was the influences of the movie, uh, I mean, of that time period. Um, it's also, uh, I read Helter Skelter when I was a teenager, and the Manson murders uh, have, uh, have always darkly fucked up, in a fucked up way, fascinated me. Um, and, uh, and the time period of the early 70s, I think, resonates thematically with a lot of things we're grappling with right now. Yeah, yeah so, the, like, the film is kind of, like, different tones. So, yeah, the, like, the, 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 at the, like, in the first half, the Christmas killers are, like, very Manson family-esque, but, like, um, towards, like, the second half of the film, they kind of become more anti-hero. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that. Uh, it was really exciting to me to, to have this gang and have them seem like a unit at first. And then every time you see them, you start to discover them a little bit more and you start to just discover their like fucked up family dynamics and you start to see um, like the truth of, of who they really are. And then uh, by the end of the film, there you, you get a sense of what's driving each of them and you really get to, to know them as individuals. Yeah. Uh, just I think it's probably the right intention is that um, whenever like Jules spoke, I wanted to punch him in the face. So um, just some, how did that, that like characterization get developed? Well, I was uh, uh, I wanted Jude to be evil. Mm -hmm. I wanted Jude to be the um, the guy that is. Uh, like, let's go, guys. He is corralling the gang. He He's the one, uh, seemingly at first, that they're all following. And then you start to discover the, the actual uh, nuances and dynamics of their little uh, family. Um, and then I was really excited that we got to cast Mina Masood, who played Aladdin, because he's so charming. And I was like, how can we take that charming and, I mean, how can we, how can we take that charm and make it super evil? And Mina was so down to go there, and uh, and it was a, an awesome adventure. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to talk about the character of Maisie, who's, I think, the, if I would say, the main anti-hero protagonist. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I wanted the movie to have, to feel like an ensemble piece mm -hmm. where you're really getting to know each of the characters um, at different points. But uh, Maisie, you know, she starts off as the cool girl and then uh, she's this, the girl that's like surrounded by the guys and um, and I think that feeds her ego a little bit. And uh, But then as you start to discover her, you start to get to know her, you start to get to learn what's actually motivating her. And then she, she ultimately comes into her own and and uh, has to act on her own without the dudes helping her. Yes. 
Yeah, and then the, the the actual protagonist of the film is Samantha, who um, stays behind at the boarding school, like against her will. And like um, you know, I was like thinking like sacrifice game. So I was thinking without spoiling too much, I was thinking like everything that happens in the film would have happened with or without Samantha there. So I was at when asked, is she the wild card? She is the wild card. I think she wasn't uh, expecting to have to stay there for the holidays. And uh, it kind of kicks off everything that happens in the movie. Mm -hmm. So uh, I saw that the uh, Sacrifice game is like a Shudder film. So when is that expected to be on Shudder? <laughs> so we're going to be on Shudder later this year and um, in all of Shudder's territories. And then also uh, we have Red Sea Media handling mm -hmm. international uh, for the rest of the world. Okay, okay thanks. Thank you. <laughs>